On today's edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast, the dogs are barking at Eagles training camp. Desai's defense has one intricate key, and exactly how important is development to this Philadelphia Eagles team in 2023? All that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in, everyone, to another edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast, your only daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast here, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Shout out to our everydayers, those of you who have ever listened to one, 1,000, 100. It doesn't matter how many episodes you've listened to. If you're joining us here, you're considered an everydayer. And anybody who's listened to the show, I'm sure you're an Eagles fan, just like myself, Gino Camilleri, as always, your host. Thank you for tuning in today. I think day five, practice five of training camp, we're starting to put the pieces together a little bit. And that's what I want to talk about, especially in regards to the defense, where offense, it seems to be more continuity. Things aren't changing as much. But on defense, Sean Desai, he's bringing in a bunch of elements from Seattle that are going to change how this defense looks year over year. And a lot of it has to do with some of those Georgia Bulldogs. We're going to start the show with that because, man, oh, man, are those dogs showing out in training camp so far. And I would have to say, if I were to pick one on offense, one on defense, well, of course, on offense, it has to go to DeAndre Swift, the newly acquired running back from the Detroit Lions. On defense, it has to be Nolan Smith. I want to start talking about Nolan Smith first because when a rookie comes into training camp, a lot of the times you can be a deer in the headlights, right? You can get up there and, oh man, I'm going against Lane Johnson. It's Jordan Maialata. It's Jason Kelsey. And your feet can be a little bit wobbly at times and you might not throw your best pass rush reps together. But man, those Georgia kids know how to come in and play football. And that's what it seems that they're doing. And multiple beat reporters have reported over the last couple practices that Nolan Smith just continues to turn heads. And why is that? Well, one, it's his freak athleticism. Not only is he able to stand up on the edge, not only is he able to play off-ball linebacker, which he was doing some today when N'Kobe Dean went out due to injury during practice, Nicobe is okay. Don't worry. That dog will be back in the lineup. But Nolan Smith is able to do a ton of different things. He's able to disguise himself. Hint, hint. We might be talking about that when it comes to Sean Desai's defensive philosophy. But he's just able to be a person who is molded into not just an edge rusher, not just an off-ball linebacker, not just a third down pass rush specialist, but somebody that is just a football player on the defensive side of the ball. And you talk about the idea of titling positions. It's tough to put a title on Nolan Smith because what is this guy? Have we seen a player like this in Philadelphia? I don't believe so. Brandon Graham, Derek Barnett, these guys are the more traditional Five tech defensive ends, hand in the dirt, can play the run, can play the pass. Josh Sweat is a little bit of both. He's that more modern, has the athleticism, has the build, has the bend, but at the same time is a freak when it comes to the run game. But he's more of an outside rusher. He's not going to be somebody that moves inside all the time. Nolan Smith is a collection of all those things. If he puts on some more mass, he could truly be a three down player. But right now, This guy is a master of many hats. And his athleticism is off the charts. He's already putting together multiple pass rush moves in sequence, as reported by multiple beat rushers, that he's able to win with speed on the outside, with just pure bend ability. He's able to win with multiple hand usage moves. 
He's able to give you that speed to power look. He could do so much as a rookie. And guys can't look away from him. When these people that are there every day and have been there multiple seasons are saying, we haven't seen somebody like this in terms of athleticism on the defensive line, I'm going to take notice. As well as the running back position, where, yeah, it's been Miles Sanders the last couple of years who's been exceptional, but the things you're hearing regarding DeAndre Swift are everything that you had hoped for when you had acquired him back during the draft. DeAndre Swift was somebody that was coveted coming out of college by the Philadelphia Eagles. There's a reason why Howie Roseman went out and got him. And there's a reason Howie Roseman does what he does. It's because he bargain shops at this position. But is he sacrificing ability for the amount that he's giving away? The amount that he's investing? No, not at all. DeAndre Swift is an incredible player. And the things you're hearing out of camp are only backing that up. Jimmy Kemsky had a good write-up today on the inside zone portion of practice and what inside zone is, or inside run portion, where they run a lot of inside zone, a lot of inside power. So where you're finding the tackles or finding the space between the tackles, between the guard, on the inside, you're not bouncing it. And he said he was decisive. He said he hit the hole when it counted, when it was tight, when there wasn't much room. He still was decisive and hit the hole when it mattered. And if you go back and look at Detroit, that was exactly what he did there too. And some of the times and some of the hangups on Miles was like, man, just take what's there. Take the hole and go. That's kind of why Kenny was favored a little bit more down the playoff stretch was because he was able to execute inside run. He was able to just get behind these big guys and go. And what Kenny said in his press conference the other day, listen to the damn center. Yeah, man, you got to be ready to go when Jason Kelsey is getting up to the next level. You got to hit that hole at the perfect timing when the combo block departs from one another. And DeAndre Swift's burst, vision, athleticism, quickness, decisiveness. We're just talking about the run game. We haven't even talked about the biggest element that could be coming into this offense being his passing and his pass catchability. Today, he beat Davian Taylor, of all people, on a wheel route. And you're saying, oh, it's Davian Taylor. But it was reported that he had multiple steps on this guy. And Nick Sirianni was talking about the ability to catch out of the backfield as opposed to out wide. It's a completely different set of circumstances the routes that you're running, your body positioning to the ball. And he kept hinting that DeAndre does that very well when he was talking about what all of these backs do. And it's clear that he is the most versatile of all the guys, as well as Nolan Smith being arguably the most versatile of all the rookies. And that's comparing him to Jalen Carter, who can do a lot on the defensive line. Keely Ringo, who could play multiple defensive back positions. Sidney Brown, who could do a lot of the same. But can Nolan Smith be an every-down player simply because you can find a spot for him at any given time? And DeAndre Swift, is he going to be the back that you say, we can't take him off of the field because he is the best of the bunch? I don't know what they're feeding him down in Georgia, what they're feeding him in Athens, but it seems that these dogs... They came in hungry this this training camp, and they came in in two different circumstances. DeAndre Swift has been around the league for a little bit, a new, fresh environment to get a part of. That's seeming to do him wonders. We'll see when it comes to on the field. I would like to say that that does turn out to be what happens. And Nolan Smith, he's coming in as a rookie, and he's flashing day over day, and he's putting together good practices. And when you hear Sean Desai and his defensive philosophy, it makes all the reason in the world, or all the sense in the world, rather, why a guy like Nolan Smith and Keely Ringo and Jalen Carter and Sidney Brown would be something that this guy is interested in coaching. And that's what we're going to talk about on the other side of the break. But before we do that, we have a message from our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. If you haven't heard of LinkedIn Jobs yet, 
and you're a small business owner, well, what are you waiting for? Every time you hire somebody, it could feel like you're going all in at the roulette table. Well, don't worry. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easy to find the right people faster and for free. What it does, they add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile if you're on there every day like myself or you are a small business hiring currently, you probably have seen this. All you do is you put out a few simple tools, screening questions, and it makes it easier for candidates to hone in on the position that you are looking for when it comes to the right skills, experience, and so forth. And when you are in a small business, there is only one place that you could trust. It is LinkedIn Jobs. They're number one over all the competitors out there. Let's be real. It's the only one that you know to go to when you are hiring or is looking for a job. So LinkedIn Job is helping you find the qualified candidates today that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. For those of you on YouTube, it is right below the screen. Those of you listening, once again, it is LinkedIn jobs slash locked on NFL. We thank LinkedIn for sponsoring this edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. All right, everybody, welcome on back to this Thursday edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. Shout out to the everydayers for joining us here. Each and every day, five days a week, minimum, minimum, we are giving you five shows a week. and We've been doing it for five years collectively now. I'm your host, Gino Camilleri. For all of those who don't know me yet, co-host Lou DiBiase. He's having some fun down at a crab broil right now. That sounds pretty good. But what's more fun than talking about the Philadelphia Eagles during training camp and in such an exciting time when there's so much turnover, especially on the defensive side of the ball, there's a lot of question marks to be had. But not in a bad way, I would say. Maybe linebacker depth. Maybe who's your starting safeties. But there's one thing that might put your mind at ease about those concerns. It is what Sean Desai believes is his key to the philosophy that he brings to Philadelphia. And I was doing some root cause analysis today on these coordinators. And as I introed on the show, I said, With the offense, there's a lot of continuity, consistency. I think that's the key word. Nick Sirianni has talked about that. Brian Johnson, Jalen Hurts, they've all talked about that. That consistency of having the same individuals in that room outside of Shane year over year. When I was looking at the defensive side of the ball, there's a lot of turnover, obviously. Jonathan Gannon goes to Arizona, brings some guys with him. In comes Sean Desai. In comes Sean Desai, who has been around the National Football League for some time, has been around some very good coordinators. Vic Fangio is with Pete Carroll the last couple years and has pumped out some pretty good production when it comes to defense. And he didn't always have the best defensive talent to work with, but yet he found it plausible to put out a good product. And that's the thing in the National Football League and a lot of sports that drives me nuts is, oh, well, we're not good enough here. We're not good enough there. We we don't have the guy we need here. Well, you have all that you have, frankly. What you have now outside of maybe a couple more pieces that Howie can bring in is what you have. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson isn't walking through those doors. Marcus Epps, TJ Edwards, Kaiser White aren't walking through those doors. But what you have are a lot of young athletes who are versatile, who can be molded in a way that Sean Desai wants them to be. And at the same time, the vets know, like Brandon Graham mentioned today, they've been through multiple different coordinators. This is nothing new for them. They just have to learn the job and move forward. So what was that key that I came up with for Sean Desai's defense? I think it has to come down to one word. Disguise. No, he's not putting on a disguise to go potentially rob a bank as an extra in one of Chris Nolan's Batman films. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the ability to present a defense in one way before the snap. 
and then make the defense look completely different post-snap. There was a clip going around when this whole Kelly Green pandemic over the last week had been popping up, and there was a clip of Buddy Ryan's defense where Jerome Brown, of all people, number 99, big defensive tackle, drops back into coverage. And you see the quarterback hesitate and look that way, and you're like, why is this guy in coverage? Well, because you can run a stun up front with Reggie White and whoever else was on that defensive line and open up things because the offense has to guess. By disguising your defense and making the offense have to think, especially the quarterback, for even a fraction of a second, will pay huge dividends in the National Football League. Let's take a step back into the Super Bowl. There was a sequence of two plays that were identical plays, just ran opposite directions. Where Kansas City put a player in motion, they waggled him out one way, put the brakes on him, sent him back the other way. Why Kansas City was able to take advantage of that play and not just score one touchdown, but two, was because Jonathan Gannon, what he presented to you pre-snap, was what you were going to get post-snap. You have to be able to counteract and have a counterpunch to what the greats like Andy Reid have. When Andy Reid is doing so much motion and sending your eyes 20 different directions, if you're just going to line up there and hope to play good football, well, the results have shown that Andy Reid's probably going to beat you. But if you're a defensive coordinator, why can't you use those same principles that an offensive coordinator uses? It was mentioned by Nicholas Morrow in his press conference today. Brandon Graham has made mention of it. Sean Desai himself has made mention of it. Nolan Smith and where he's been lining up all around the football. Derek Barnett's playing linebacker. They're throwing out three safety looks. Sean Desai is going to make you question what is happening, not just pre-snap, but post-snap as well. And for young quarterbacks, that's a headache. Even for veteran quarterbacks, that's a headache. Because let's say you present the idea that you have five guys up front, but three of them drop into coverage. And those three guys, two of them were on the middle, and one guy was an off-ball linebacker, and down comes one of your three safeties to blitz the quarterback off the edge, which you set up in a two-high shell, but then you rotated to single high and threw a joker underneath so you could protect against those in routes. It probably sounds like a foreign language, what I just said to you, but that's the idea that Sean Desai wants to give to other quarterbacks. He wants to make you react to his defense, where you can't be pre proactive and come at him and know what he's going to do because he's presented these looks before and he's just going to line up and play the way that he is lined up, just like Jim Schwartz, just like Jonathan Gannon. No, no, no. He's going to make you think. Disguising this defense, putting these players where they are best, in a year where you lost a ton of defensive talent is truly going to be the biggest benefit that Sean Desai can bring to Philadelphia. Don't put your guys in a bad position. Put them in a position that's good for them, but bad for the opposing offense by disguising your defense. And I'm sure we'll see a ton of that, not in the preseason, but when the regular season kicks off. And to finish up talking about day five of training camp, I want to get into the idea of development. Christian Ellis has been a huge talking point on potentially being a starting linebacker, and so is Kavon Wallace. And why is that? Well, it comes down to development. And we'll get into that to finish up the show. But before I finish up this edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast, I have a message from our friends over at Underdog Fantasy Underdog Fantasy is back and better than ever with not one, 
not two, not three, but Best Ball Mania number four. If you haven't heard of their Best Ball Mania tournament, it's the largest fantasy football contest of all time. Why is that? Well, listen to this number. They're giving away $15 million of total prizes. $15.15 million, including an absurd $3 million going to the winner. Last year, the winner drafted their team in July. Don't wait around. What is underdog fantasy? Well, it's the easiest way to play fantasy football. I'm telling you, it is a best ball format. No waivers, no trades, a single draft, and they will set the best lineup for you every single week. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store and sign up using the promo code Locked on, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. That's Underdog Fantasy using the promo code Locked On. For those of you on YouTube, it's at the bottom of the screen. For those of you listening, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. And we thank Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. All right, everyone, finishing up this edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast. I'm your host, Gino Camilleri, and thank you to all the everydayers for tuning in this long into the episode and this long into our tenure here at LOE, coming on the sixth season that we are talking about the Birds, five years in total, and we're talking about arguably one of the better teams that we've ever had in Philadelphia. After last year, the departure of a ton of starters on defense. Development was going to have to happen. Howie Roseman simply finds the ingredients for the recipe, and the coaches have to put that recipe together. And why this talking point came up to me and popped into my head today was because of the talk of Christian Ellis and talk of Sean Desai's defense where Kavon Wallace is getting meaningful snaps and Derek Barnett is playing linebacker and you're looking at Christian Ellis saying, could this guy potentially start now? Is he better than Morrow at this point? I think you have to look at this and much like the talk of root cause analysis, boil this down to why, why is this happening? Well, I think you could take it to the guy that he's potentially replacing in TJ Edwards. Why was TJ the player that he was? Well, he came in as a, Hardworking kid, had all the traits as an off-the-field guy, a hard worker, didn't get any trouble, wasn't the most athletically gifted guy, didn't play much against the pass, but he came in and he worked hard and he was a special teams player. And when he got on the field against the run, he just continued to tackle and tackle and not miss tackles. And then all of a sudden he becomes an every-down player for you Because you didn't cut him three years ago when he was a raw player. Much like you didn't with Marcus Epps when you brought him in and DK Metcalf took his lunch money to end the the season for the Eagles. Christian Ellis is the same way. And I'm somebody that can get caught up in recency bias and say, oh man, like, why is this the best option? Well, you have to see the bigger picture sometimes. And Christian Ellis seems to be that guy that is embracing the bigger picture, and the coaches are giving him all the chances to go out there and win that job. And the coaches have to trust themselves to develop the players, but at the same time, the players have to want to get better. It's a two-way street. When you look at Christian Ellis, it's an interesting story that I think we've seen before, but yeah, I think we're still a little blind to it, still a little blind to the Reed Blankenships of the world or... The Josh Job who pops in is the first guy off the bench when James Bradbury goes down. And just a collection of these guys who weren't the stars of their draft class, but just continue to come in every day and work. And the National Football League and sport in general is a funny thing where a guy can look like a million bucks one place and you go to another place and he looks like a a penny that's been kicked around the train station. Alignment, assignment, coaching, responsibilities. That's so many variables outside of what the player does. So when those things work and all those variables start to mesh together, you start to get the TJ Edwards of the world. You start to get the Reed Blankenships of the world. You start to get the Christian Ellis's of the world where 
you don't have to invest higher because you can get by with these guys. And they do a good enough job and have warranted getting that play time because they buy into the culture. They'll play special teams clearly. And they'll do any job that they have to take on. Are they the best players? No. Is Christian Ellis the best player in the world? No. But is development key to getting these guys in a position to where they could be their best version of themselves? 100%. So patience. And I say that every year this time of the preseason. Don't get caught up in the hoopla. Don't knock these guys. Don't rag on them just to get caught up in the clicks. They're human beings fighting for jobs. We're not all perfect. This podcast probably sounds way better than the first podcast I ever did. Development, development, development. How do you get the BGs, the Fletcher Coxes, the Lane Johnsons, the Jason Kelseys? You have to develop these guys. Let the coaches coach the players and let the players show on film that they deserve a job. And man, I can't wait to keep talking about that Freaking defense, man. It's exciting, but that'll do it for us today on the Locked On Eagles podcast, this Thursday edition of the show. Thank you for all the everydayers for tuning in. We will be back tomorrow on Friday to bring you one more show before the Eagles open practice this weekend. Fans, get out there. It's an exciting time to be a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Make sure you're following along each and every day. Make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts and in video form on YouTube as well. Follow us on Twitter. Until our next episode, you can catch me at GC24 underscore football. Catch my whole co-host, DBossi, L-O-E, on Twitter, and follow the main page at Locked On Birds. Make sure you check out all of the Locked On Podcast podcasts, but make sure more than anything, you're following the birds. As always, signing off, Gino Camilleri, Fly Eagles Fly.